Hey folks, Patrick Tipton, Portrayal Press. Welcome back to Shop Time. So I promised you last week that we were gonna take a ride in the Jeep today, but I made a liar out of myself, so no more promises on timing. The charging system on this Jeep is still not working totally correctly. It is now charging, but it's got the potential to overcharge. So we're gonna take a deep dive today into a World War II Jeep charging system, teach you how to diagnose what your problem is, and we're gonna get into the voltage regulator, which is a problem in this particular case, and see if we can't get it working correctly. So let's get on it. There are three parts to your World War II Jeep's charging system. A battery, a generator, and a voltage regulator. So let's talk a little bit about what each of those parts do for your system and how to check and see whether or not they're operating correctly. World War II Jeep came with a six volt battery. That was the standard when this Jeep was designed in the 30s and the 40s. So your Jeep should have a six volt system. Now some people convert them to 12 volts. You don't have to do that. And there are people who will give you the pluses and minuses. I've gone on rants before as to why the six volt system was good enough in 1943 to win a war. And it's also good enough in 2019 to get your Jeep up and running and let you do the things you wanna do. So I am a proponent of keeping it original. So six volt system, how do you check a battery? Very inexpensively, you can buy a battery tester. You can also go to your local AutoZone or one of those other type of box uh, auto parts stores and they're gonna have them. All that's in here is some resistance and it will tell you, it reads the voltage without resistance. And then when you put it on and click load, it will show you whether or not it stays in the green and whether or not the battery is operating correctly. That's all there is to check in the battery. Worth getting one of these. You can also find them at garage sales, estate sales, things like that. If you just keep your eyes open, it's worth having one in your toolbox. And the battery's function is obviously to store energy and help you start the Jeep. Once the Jeep starts, the battery is actually not doing anything. The, the generator is doing everything necessary to keep the Jeep running and also keep lights on and other things. So the only purpose of the battery is to help start the vehicle. The second component of the charging system is a generator and the generator's job in this system is to create electricity. And we're not going to get into how that happens, but basically we've got a magnetic field rotating inside of a bunch of coils and that creates electricity. And in this case, it'll create up to about seven and a half volts of electricity, about 40 amps is what this, this generator is created to do. And there are a couple of ways to test a generator to see whether or not it is generating. And we're gonna do that right now. In the vehicle, when it's installed with a voltage regulator, there's a very simple way to see whether or not it's working. Out of the vehicle, you can do what's called a motor test because a generator is essentially an electric motor. And so all you need to do, and we'll talk in a second about how to do that, but if the generator is off on your bench, you can hook a six volt battery up to it and get it to turn. And that would tell you that the generator is gonna probably in all likelihood function the way it's supposed to. But the third component that we're gonna talk about is the voltage regulator. And the voltage regulator is the most complex piece of equipment here in this charging system in your World War II Jeep. And it's got several jobs to do. The first job, which is very important, is that it needs to turn the whole system off when the generator is not generating electricity so that the battery doesn't drain into the system because it's kind of an open. If you think about it, the current's got to flow into the battery. Something's got to turn it off so it doesn't go the other way when the generator is not generating. So that part of it, and it's a switch, uh, it's a little electromagnetic switch, is called the circuit breaker in terminology that they use to talk about voltage regulators. The second job of the voltage regulator is to regulate the voltage. And so it does that by changing the amount of electricity that is going into the field coil. And that switch is called the voltage regulator. It's a little bit uh, confusing but it essentially controls the output. So it will keep that output down around six and a half volts, which is a sort of nominal output of the battery, up to about, as I said before, seven and a half, maybe even seven, eight, seven point eight volts and about 40 amps. So that's the second part. The third part is what they call the current regulator. And what that's trying to do is make sure that we don't overcharge the battery. So we obviously, after we start the battery or start the car in a very, very cold situation, we drain a lot of energy out of the battery. And so it makes sense that the generator and the voltage regulator are gonna try to put as much energy back into the battery as quickly as it can and as quickly as you safely can do. And so there's your 40 amp, 7.8 volts, right after you start 
start the vehicle, if you're looking on an, on an amp meter, you might see it up around 15, 18 amps. And it's doing everything it can to get that battery back charged. Now, once the battery starts getting charged up, we need to cut that down or otherwise we're gonna boil the battery. And so that is, again, that, that component is called the current regulator. So it's one of the three components in, in a World War II Jeep uh, voltage regulator. And I'll show you how that works in just a second. The World War II Jeep was equipped with Autolite products. Um, the voltage regulator and the generator were both made by Autolite. And there's a technical manual called TM9 1825 Bravo that has detailed instructions. And it's a great manual. It tells you how they work. And it also tells you, it gives you detailed instructions on how to diagnose and repair and rebuild. So going back to the voltage regulator, there are a bunch of things going on here if you have to get into them. Now, most of the time, you're going to get a World War II Jeep. The voltage regulator is probably not going to have been messed with very much. And you should be able to clean all your contact points, put your generator back in there, and have it work correctly right out of the box. If it's not working correctly, then I would suggest that you get a hold of this manual and start following um, the, the process that they lay out in the manual to diagnose your problems and understand what's going on in there. There, there are quite a few adjustments, actually. I mean, this is a relatively complicated, it's simple enough, but it's relatively complicated to get set up correctly. So there are point gaps in it that you have to check. There are some resistance values that you need to check. And there, as you saw before, there are some thumb wheels that adjust tension. And right now, I don't have the tool to actually set up the tension. It's measured in ounces and it's a, it's a special tool. I haven't found one yet. So we're gonna have to figure out other ways to do it. And we're gonna get into that in just a second further when we get into the voltage regulator and what's working and what's not. And we'll talk a little bit more about, about the things that we've already checked and the things that we can check now and hopefully get this working correctly. Okay, so the first and simplest test to see whether or not your generator is working is to start your Jeep like this has already started, loosen up your positive battery cable and take it off. Now don't hit the, if it still runs, I don't know why it's clanking like that, but, oh, that's interesting. So we're learning something here. That's not really supposed to be happening, I don't think. But We'll talk about that. It's supposed to move like that, but probably not so much. So that's the first test. Now, what did we just do? We took the battery off. So if the generator is making enough power to keep the motor running, it obviously works. So it worked. So that's a great test for the generator and it requires no equipment. So the second test requires a volt ohm meter and you need to hook it up to your battery. Now I can kind of put the probes and lay it in on the, on the one side and I use a plastic clip on the positive side to make it stay like so and right now if you look at this I'm getting 8.72 volts which is way higher than it should be right so this thing isn't doing what it's supposed to be doing okay now see I just the voltage regulator should be voltage regulating and it's not see I mean this thing so if I let this thing go, you're going to watch it go back up. And I'll tell you what this means, but we're overcharging the battery right now. So I don't want that to happen, okay? So we're going to talk about fixing this next, but that's my second test. I'm clearly getting more than six and a half volts, so interesting. So the Jeep just died. I was messing around with the voltage regulator and not exactly sure why it did that, but clearly we, again, don't have everything in adjustment. And the test that I wanted to do was to check for maximal uh, generator output. And the way I was gonna do that is by taking a little jumper wire like I have here, hooking it to the positive terminal, and then going to the field terminal, which is marked on the generator right here. And when you do that, 
it should drive the generator to maximum output, which is 40 amps. And you don't want to do it too long because you're going to melt the battery or not melt it, but you're going to overcharge the battery and start boiling it. So we don't want to do that. But when we just put this on, what we found in the system is that it's already overcharging. So I know that the generator at this point is working correctly. And all we're going to get is that same 8.7 voltage, which is really high. So what I need to do now is try to adjust the voltage regular. I've got the voltage set too high. And the way we're going to do that, this thumb wheel right here, right here controls how much voltage this machine is putting out. And so I tighten this spring down. The tighter the spring, the more voltage you put out. I'm going to loosen the heck out of the spring and see if we can't bring this back down to something closer to, uh, you know, 7.7, 7.6 volts. This voltage regulator had been messed with a lot before I got it. So everything was out of adjustment. So I went through and followed the manual and got all the contact points adjusted correctly. But these spring tensions are all supposed to be set a certain way. And honestly, I don't have the tool that's mentioned to be able to press on this. You're supposed to have so many ounces of pressure. And this is just not set up correctly. So what I'm gonna do at this point, as you saw on the voltmeter, it's putting out a lot of different volts, and it's kind of crazy what's going on right now. I, I, I'm not 100% sure um, what's out of adjustment, but I know at this point that these two, which is my current regulator and the voltage regulator itself, they work together, and it's not working quite correctly. We made a little bit of progress, but I'm going to have to go back to the manual real quick, and I, need to, I think I need to tighten the, the current regulator up and loosen the voltage regulator a little further. We'll start it up again, and again, I don't want to see eight volts. We'll burn the battery up if we do that, and we'll, we'll overcook it. Now, the other thing that I've been doing to hack the system, if you will, is I put the lights on, which takes quite a bit of current, and that'll keep it down, and it, you can watch the amp meter and see that it's not pegging the amp meter when you turn the current on. It, it pulls that voltage down and pulls the number of amps being put into the battery way down. And when I've been driving the Jeep, that's exactly how I've been doing it, is driving with the lights on, which is a good idea anyway. But clearly we want this to be working correctly. I'm sitting back here basking in the glory of success over the voltage regulator. I got a bevy of babes coming over. The pinup girls will be here as soon as we turn the cameras off and uh, we're gonna celebrate success over the VR. So anyway, a, a great day in the shop today. Got the voltage regulator working correctly for the first time since I've gotten this Jeep back running. Uh, we're not overcharging anymore. Uh, we had a voltage all the way up to almost 9 volts, which was a little scary, but got it back down. It's tamed. It's down to 7.4. It keeps up with the lights, so it's really doing its job as we described before. So, as always, I appreciate you tuning in. Please hit the like button and subscribe if you haven't already to the channel. If you've got comments, I'd love to hear them. Anything we can do better, uh, we, we do appreciate the feedback. And if you've got questions on your own project, voltage regulator or otherwise, um, you can reach us at sales at portrayal.com. I'm always happy to answer questions or you can get on the phone. You can find our phone on our website and uh, I'd be happy to chat with you about that as well. So as always, again, thanks for tuning in. I'd like to say, keep your corner square, get out in your shop and, and get out there, make yourself a little bit uncomfortable, do something you haven't done before and I'll bet you'll be successful at the end. So thanks again, Patrick Tipton signing off.